my class is ready. My class are here. You guys ready? Yeah, hold up. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, ready. Give me two seconds. Three, two. Choose and load up, boys. Uh, All right, let's get it. I think he's on the left, the left, the left. He's on me. Got one. I got you. Ah. I'm gonna kill Sheik, I'm gonna kill Sheik. Spawn clip. Oh, okay. On your right, on your right. Double. Is that you on bomb? Are you on bomb? Come in. Confirming next hard point. Back there. Yeah. I come in, coming from my lid. Okay, throw a grenade. Three, two. Wait. What are you doing? I'm out. I'm taking this home. This here is the world's most powerful gaming laptop running a full fledged gaming setup. And this thing is no joke. In fact, if you are going to replace your gaming custom PC, this, this here, this is it. You have the portability, the power. Cherry MX, there's so much to this laptop to discover. And today, today I'm going to show you exactly what that is. The Titan GT77 comes in this massive box, a box with a full on backpack, mainly because as much as this is a 17 inch laptop, it's massive. Backpacks that can fit this are very, very hard to find. On the side, we get a separate box actually containing the goodies. Yes, black, 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 and great specs to be honest. I'm also happy to see that we get a very different unboxing experience from all the other laptops we've reviewed. Inside, you'll find the laptop wrapped in this nice little foamy like paper. There's also this massive 330 watt power brick to power all these specs. And yo, cool enough, we got this nice little lucky keychain blacked out oof plus we get a nice little 128 gigabyte dual drive and a gaming mouse almost very similar to my glorious old negative mouse yo this is like the equivalent of what you have there actually the 3080 ti and uh, almost the same processor you have in there holy shit. So we've had this in the studio for a bit now and it's been seeing a lot of Warzone with the boys. One thing I'd like to say is that this thing is in fact massive. Also, for the time we've been gaming, there's one thing I realized since day one and that's lots of fingerprints on this chassis. Look, this is a laptop with a black aluminum body on the lid, the interior and the bottom panel. It has tiny sharp corner edges that don't really seem to bother anyone's palms. It has little flex towards the keyboard, very little flex on the metal screen and solid hinges. I don't think these need to be particularly tightened up since it doesn't seem to wobble when raging during Warzone. The body itself is heavy. I mean, this is a seven pound laptop with a charger weighing around the same as a MacBook Air. And the reason for all that being true is because of the insane specs this has. It's so much power that we've got a massive exhaust vent in the back, paired with two exhaust vents towards the sides and at the top and bottom, MSI decided to engineer this with intake grills. All of that to very much use its four fans with all these crazy heat pipe systems going on to cool the system. This cools down an i9 12900HX, which is the fastest Intel laptop processor Intel manufactures. It also cools down an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti, which can now boost up to 175 watt with dynamic boost. And these specs also consist of being able to upgrade this laptop to a total of 128 gigabytes of RAM, up to four SSD modules forming a total of 16 terabytes of storage, and even a replaceable Wi-Fi 6 e-card. All I have to say is, Thank you MSI for giving us consumers full control over this build. One interesting fact I'd like to mention is that the Thunderbolt 4 ports, the HDMI port and the mini display port all connect to the GPU. The only thing I noticed is that in order to run display through USB-C, you need to make sure that Optimus is on. Other than that, HDMI works extremely well. It actually was able to run my LG G2 at 120 Hertz with G-Sync on. Other ports this laptop includes are a power connector, two USB-A ports, an SD card slot, and an audio jack on the left, and an Ethernet port and another USB-A port on the right. All plenty of ports to really be able to rock this on a full gaming desk setup like this one. 
The thing though I was most excited about this laptop was the keyboard. Reason why is because this here is a full-fledged mechanical keyboard. In fact, it actually has Cherry MX Ultra Loop profile switches. They've got a 1.8 millimeter travel to them. They sound good and keycaps feel great to the touch. This board does have per key RGB backlighting with four different levels of brightness. And if you wish to customize and switch the effects on the RGB, the Steel Series software can do so. This, by the way, also allows you to change the RGB colors on the rest of the chassis. Now, the only downside with this keyboard is that, well, these sound louder compared to other laptop keyboards out there. My only personal complaint with this keyboard would be the smaller shift key on the right hand side. The rest is pretty freaking cool. I even don't mind the smaller form factor of the numpad. Fingerprint scanner works like it's supposed to. Touchpad is big, feels nice to the touch, a bit like a metal feel. And MSI did state that it is a glass surface. Now, towards the sides of the keyboard, we do have speakers. And in total, this laptop does have four speakers with two tweeters and two buffers. These speakers live on the edge and towards the bottom of the chassis. It is the best sounding MSI laptop I've ever tested. But I do hear a bit of rattling when these are at full volume. I'm not sure if it's coming from the keyboard or from the top of the casing on the base plate. Definitely not something that has to do with the display or hinges. This panel, by the way, is a 17.3 inch Ultra HD Anti-Glare 4K panel. It does deliver 120 Hertz, which is cool and also delivers 100% DCI-P3. Not only great for gaming, but also great for editing and creating any sort of content. And as heavy as this laptop is, Yes, this panel can be lifted with one finger all the way to a total of 135 degrees. It's cool. I actually really like it. I find the contrast is super nice. The blacks are black and the highlights are not that harsh. Games like Cyberpunk and even Warzone look incredible in my opinion. I'm sure the fact that we are running an RTX 3080 Ti helps of course. But you know, I'm happy to see that we get to pair a GPU like this to a panel like this and VRR works as is supposed to. No complaints with this panel and surely this 4K display definitely seems to deliver a good amount of nits. Oh, and don't worry about light bleed. It's not something we've particularly experienced with this laptop. As much as I love the form factor of the display with these nice thin edges, the webcam living at the top is definitely not it. For the price, I was expecting to have a 1080p camera and at least better microphones. Now, this is how things sound when I'm typing and I'm talking at the same time. There's also a bit of background noise, which is good. Yeah, not bad, I guess. Definitely need better mics. Not the best, but hey, at least Windows Hello works without any issues. Before getting into gaming, let's talk a bit about performance, specifically how the CPU and GPU perform. I ran a few tests, okay? I'm not the type to run tests, but here's how I stress tested this CPU. With Ida64, we ran four tests, one being under extreme performance with a couple of different fan modes, another one being under balance, and the last one being in silent mode. Altogether, very much produced these temperatures right here, which were not bad at all considering the power this chassis is enclosing. However, do know we did reach overheating temperatures after five minutes of extreme performance with full blasting fans. The same tests were performed with even benchmarks, where we again eventually increased as we changed modes, except for when the fans were at full blast. With this info, I ran Cinebench R23 to acquire some really impressive single core and multi core scores, and Time Spy to really test the overall performance of this hardware. Now, I just want to point out that this does have a MUX switch. I recommend you leave this as it is unless you're planning to use software tools like Adobe programs, which take advantage of some of the components the Intel architecture delivers. And there's also Display Overdrive, which supposedly delivers a better response rate. I don't have the tools to test such thing, but on my end, when it's on or off, I didn't really notice any difference. Plus, honestly, the total system latency was just perfect in my opinion. When I click the mouse button, bullets do fire instantly. For a 16 core CPU that has very similar specs to our i9 12900K within our editing ring, this is very impressive. I will say though, it can get quite hot when pushing this thing, especially towards the top of the keyboard. And all of these tests that run while the laptop was plugged in, 
please do not expect to get MacBook-like hours on something like this. In fact, we all know that the Intel architecture is nothing like the AMD. It doesn't prioritize power efficiency at all. And so if you do decide to game while not charging, getting around two hours of use when doing so was completely normal. There's only so much juice you can squeeze out of this 99 watt hour battery. Other than for gaming, if you guys do use the display power saver feature and lower the brightness of the keyboard, you can expect to get around five hours of normal use time. But at the end of the day, whatever you do with it, the fans will kick in and things can get loud. Here's what it sounds like on idle. And here's what this sounds like when playing Warzone. You can of course always just use the F and key with the arrow up to max out the fans. It's exactly what we did for our extreme test. Overall, gaming on this has been wonderful. It's been a nice experience. I actually gave it to Jan to take home so he could play Warzone and he loved it. Connecting this to the setup delivers a great gaming experience. On Warzone, we get frames per second of around 101 dock. And when we're playing as a standalone unit while plugged, we get around 120. It's pretty impressive considering the laptop is supporting two monitors on the setup. I play games such as Halo and Cyberpunk and none of them seem to be slowing this computer at all. It is able to support all my peripherals, these two 4K 120 monitors, and of course, the crazy games I was throwing at it. I'm pleased with it and even more pleased with the fact that MSI were smart enough to throw three more slots for added storage. This means that with these SSDs, you can very much partition your work, your hobbies, your games all in one single device. It's actually pretty freaking clean. I did run a Crystal Mark benchmark on their main SSD and as expected, it is fast. I also did connect an SD card to it and the SD card reader wasn't too bad at all. I mean, I can't complain, my MacBook Pro reader isn't the best as well. You guys should check out that video, by the way. Look, as a whole, great laptop. As far as the portability goes, it's not really the point of a system like this. Other than being a gaming laptop, at the end of the day for the price, I feel like it's a portable workstation more than anything. There's just so much freaking power in here. I mean, look at it. It can live in this setup and run better than our mini ITX build. It's definitely a really interesting alternative for those that have the budget and can stomach something like this. You guys seem to be enjoying most of our MSI reviews, so I'll keep them coming. Let me know what type of laptops you guys want to see next. I'll try to make those reviews for you. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Oh,